I'm Nick Lologis. In my years of practicing as an infertility specialist, there are times when you get gobsmacked at what some couples go through to achieve a pregnancy. Sometimes the journey isn't easy. Sometimes it is difficult, but there's always a solution. There's always a way of getting that child. It's up to you whether you want to go on that journey. Wow, it's been amazing for us. But um, if the best result tonight that, that Carlos and I can deliver to you guys is to make this more accessible, then I leave here really, really happy. Our journey started with Nick last year in May. Um, we'd been trying for about six months to conceive, pretty casually um, as it goes. Um, we didn't really want to endure the stress of, you know, quick, it's the window. We didn't want to go through all of that stuff and put a lot of pressure on our relationship by becoming really myopic about having a baby. Um, we wanted to be really careful about the impact that focus had on our relationship. So pretty much I'd been on the pill since I was 17. My fertility was actually a mystery to me. I'd taken it absolutely religiously every single day of my life. I'd never had anything go wrong, so I just didn't know. I didn't know if I could have a baby, didn't know if I was fertile or infertile. What I did know is I was 44, I'd met an awesome bloke, and we wanted to have a baby. Um, over the last few years, I'd also watched quite a few of my friends um, go through the IVF process, and some got really lucky, and it was fabulous. But most of my friends who were my age actually were really struggling with the process and there was huge emotional impact, pretty significant financial impact. Um, and the stories that I heard sort of frightened me because they were missing what I called innovation. I didn't really know what I was talking about or what I was hearing, but it seemed to me that it was just this treadmill of the same. And to me that was concerning and I wasn't certain if that was what I wanted for us. Um, my best friend had just got on that treadmill with her new bloke and it was proving to be brutal, absolutely brutal. Um, my curiosity about donor eggs was first sort of tweaked about three years ago when a client I was working with, who was 48 at the time, she'd been through nine years of IVF and infertility treatment with no solutions whatsoever. Um, on her 38th birthday, she sort of told me at a meeting that she and her husband were off to Spain for eight weeks and they were just going to have a lovely long extended holiday. And when she came back, she was pregnant and seven months later, baby Alyssa was born, which was just wonderful. I didn't really bother to ask at the time and it wasn't until I met baby Alyssa and I was having a coffee with her that we talked about the fact that she they'd gone to Spain to access donor eggs because she'd thought, sod it, I'm not taking no for an answer. Australian policy is pretty retrograde. Europeans have got it and women have the right to access this stuff and we should have the right to, to give it a go and see what we can achieve. Anyway, they went over and what a great result. It was fantastic. Around about the same time, another girlfriend of mine, who Nick's worked with, um, she'd had a couple of failed attempts at IVF as well. Um, she was getting very, very frustrated. And we were at a party one night and she told me that she found this really interesting doctor, this bloke, who had sort of set himself up with some other European teams. Um, and that he struck her as being quite different. Um, and that what she liked about him was that he believed in a thorough upfront investigation of her body, her, her body, not a female body, her body. Um, and that he believed in innovative approaches to infertility. And that he was quite transparent, that he was interested in European techniques um, for infertility that weren't necessarily widely used here. Some had no published academic papers on them but he pursued these rigorously in the name of innovation and science and getting results for women. To me, that sounded really interesting. What she also said about Nick was that he was totally unapologetic. 
and that he got results. His numbers spoke for himself. He tested patients up front for a gazillion things. You've just seen all this stuff up here. I'm nowhere near articulate, uh, as articulate as Nick, but gosh, isn't that nice to know that there's no rock left unturned uh, when it comes to your body and that it's not just a cookie cutter approach to maybe getting a baby for a couple of grand at the end of a process. Um, what I also really, really liked about it was that when Nick met her, he very quickly identified that the issues that she had with her body were significant and IVF would never have delivered Chris a result at all, period. Anyway, fast forward to now, she's now the mother of a toddler and she's pregnant with twins and Nick again found some really amazing results for her because she had that incompatibility with her partner's um, sperm with her second pregnancy. So great result yet again. So after six months of Project Baby and it not going anywhere, it seemed to me that this bloke was my man. And if we were gonna do it, I didn't really care whether we succeeded or, or not. What was important to me was that we looked after each other on the journey, but what we were contributing to was something bigger and that we were helping push this research forward, regardless of our personal outcomes. The other thing about Nick was that he came with some warnings. Oh, he's very direct, Balfie. You know, he'll tell you how it is. He doesn't muck around. Bedside manner. This all sounded unreal to me because it was no bullshit. And that's what we needed. That's what I needed. I'm a prag pragmatist. I don't, I don't want cotton wool and softly, softly and end your songs. I need to know what's happening and I need to know it now and I need to be told to do it. So I got the digits and, and we were in. I'm generally a fairly relaxed cat at the best of times. It takes a lot to, to rattle my cage. But that morning when we drove to Richmond, I was going spare in the car. I was so nervous and so stressed. I was really worried that we'd get there and Nick could say, well, you can't have a baby or, um, yeah, you've got to go on IVF and there you go, that's the process. Um, I wasn't certain if he'd talk about eggs. I didn't really know much about eggs. I thought I did, but I didn't. Um, I didn't know if we'd leave just really confused and really stressed about money. Um, I just really wasn't certain. But as usual, it was all a total waste of energy to stress about it, because we got in there and it was so easy. We pretty much laughed with Nick as soon as we walked in, which is always a winner for me. Um, and being all pretty time poor, what I liked was he cut straight to the chase. Um, why were we here? What did we want? Did we really want it? Life, life can be pretty fun without kids. Two incomes, traveling the world, whatever. Did we, did we really want to get into this? And I sort of appreciated that because it's honest. Um, what he also said was that he'd only um, treat us after he knew what was really going on with us. Um, and that we sort of had to do it his way which I think was fair enough as well. He gave us some facts, and this is what got me. Four to seven percent of women 40 plus only succeed on IVF. Four to seven percent. Of those, only 30 percent carry to term. Do the maths. Fact, donor egg options existed for us, and their success rate was sitting at 70 to 75 percent. Fact, do the maths. The issue with IVF, as Nick just touched on, is that generally, a woman of my age, our, our gooey eggs are of low quality. We've given all of our great ones away without caring about it too much in the past because we're too busy going to the disco. Um, <laughs> and that sort of makes sense that by the time you get to our age, it's biology 101, isn't it? You know, that your time's sort of up. Um, but the opportunity for donor eggs was that more, than, more often than not, as Nick said, our ovens, are pristine, we've got Miele's happening there, and all they need is a bit of a clean <laughs> and a little bit of a scrub up. You know, a bit of a spruce, a bit of a shine, some good eggs, some good swimmers, and a little bit of love, and generally, you cook a good, you cook a good baby. Um, and that was really interesting to me, I'd never thought about it that way. The oven was intact. So it was all pretty full on, it was a pretty quick consultancy, but it was, informative enough. 
What I also liked was it gave me options. I didn't just walk away thinking I was going to have to go on IVF. I was slightly concerned that I hadn't done my hard time on IVF, so you know, was I worthy of going straight to donor eggs? Um, so we went away and had to do some thinking. And what struck me was I just couldn't shake off the stats. I just couldn't get that 70 to 75%, I'm 44, I need to go, we know what we want. I couldn't shake it, no matter how I, I tried. And the most compelling thing to me over and above this was that I would have two teams bespoke working with us. I would have a team here in Melbourne from go to woe, available 24-7, and then I would have this awesome bloke, I nicknamed him Pants Off, but his name is Pants Off, <laughs> um, and his team in Athens working with us as well. And I actually, once we decided, I actually sort of stalked them and got in touch and built a conversation with the team over there, which was great. So within two weeks, we didn't have anything to think about because it spoke for itself. The process was pretty, the decision for me was very easy to make. I'm, it didn't worry me that the genetic material wasn't mine because my philosophy to life is if I can afford to buy a Porsche, why am I going to buy a VW? I'm just not going to do it. I'm going to go and buy an Hermes handbag. I'm not going to go and shop at Sports Girl. So that made the decision for me. As a couple, our approach to life is about keeping things really simple, looking after each other and making the most of everything that comes our way and making it a real opportunity that we celebrate. So we did a swap test together. And the test that we did was, did we, what did we want? We wanted a baby. When did we want it? Now. <laughs> egg don was egg donation legal and straightforward? Pretty much looked like it. Looked very eth eth ethical to me. Um, would it deliver us the greatest chance of success? Absolutely. You couldn't contest those figures. The baby would actually grow in me. So was that compelling enough for me to get over the fact that it wasn't going to have my big nose? Yeah, it was. <laughs> pretty much thought it doesn't, it doesn't live without my oven. So that's good enough that makes it mine. The cost, cost of eggs, chance of success versus IVF and the same. Again, if I looked at the stats, probably I would have done three rounds of IVF. It all pretty much adds up. It's a like for like, but the time frame was far superior and I'm not a patient person. So I knew that I would know within six months Whatever we invested, the decision was, if it worked, it worked. If it didn't, it didn't. Integrity of us. Would it keep Carlos and I strong and a team, as opposed to breaking us? I believe so. And duty of care. Something that doesn't necessarily get talked about a lot in this industry, but it's a really, really fundamental part for every person in this room. Is that duty of care there? And for me, it was prolific. It was prolific from Nick's attitude from the get-go, um, from when I rang and asked a few questions on the phone, um, from when I sent emails to the team in Greece with weird questions. That duty of care was, was through the line and I wasn't even a patient yet. So the process itself, what did that look like when I chunked it down? I had to understand this thing. Well, it was pretty simple. Meet with Nick often, have a lot of tests, Take a regimen of hormones and drugs whenever you're meant to. Send off your donor briefing forms. They miraculously find the match. Get on a plane. Get to the clinic. They extract the eggs. Go through the fertilisation process. Day five, come back in, get your transfer. And 10 days later, find out if you're good to go. It's actually that simple. It's, it's hard to believe, but it is. We make our own fate, right? So the decision was simple, did we want to do it or not? Two weeks later I picked up the phone and we were back in Nick's office. Um, I think it was May and I think we got on a plane in September, October. We were going to go to Greece and we were going to make a baby. It was going to be awesome. We were going to Europe. We were going to have a massive holiday and a great time. And if it worked, it worked. And if it didn't, it didn't. It didn't matter and we weren't going to discuss if it didn't work. The other thing I needed to address 